Okay, so today um, we're going to be not necessarily rebuilding, but kind of cleaning a carburetor for the engine that's placed in front of the camera, which is a OS 15 CV Hyper, which has got uh, all new internals, which was actually seized up when I got it. Uh, a fellow um, Facebook friend sent it to me for free, for free from, I believe, Texas. So, anyhow... We're going to get down to this. Another thing is, check out my new tripod. That's what's holding up my camera right now. Some painter's tape. And uh, so we're going to get into this here. So this carburetor's been sitting in Liquid Wrench. I'm not sponsored by Liquid Wrench or their company at all, but they have great products, just putting that out there. Um, this carburetor was all stuck. I've already had most of it apart. And what we're going to do is replace the rubber seal that goes on the outside and we're going to dig through this uh, lovely bunch of OS carburetor parts here and see if we can piece a high speed needle together. I think we'll go for the high speed needle first. Just also like to thank all the subscribers. You guys are awesome. And all the viewers and whatever out there. Right on guys. Um, I don't recommend using pliers to work on this kind of stuff, but this pair of pliers right now is all I got um, since all my tools right now are on hiatus. In other words, not at my house. So this is all I have to work with. I don't recommend using pliers to do this, but this is all I've got. So we're just going to roll with it here. Okay, so what we're going to do is take the low speed needle out of the carburetor or off or whatever. The other crappy thing is my mail got stolen the other day. Went downstairs to go check my mail, and I got this. And the package that was inside of it. I'm not going to show my front because I don't want everyone having my address. And there was some RPM parts in there for my T-Max, which you guys have seen before. Um, that are missing. They're gone in action, so I contacted the seller on eBay about it. Which, by the way, was great. And he says, oh, well, I'm sorry to see that or hear that. So he sent me, or is sending, I should say, replacement parts. These carburetor O-rings and stuff like that for these OS carburetors are quite hard to come by nowadays. Luckily, I was able to find one. It took about a month to get here from Hong Kong, China. So here it is. The old one is over here. hard as a rock that's no good you don't want that right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and use a little after on oil we're just gonna put a dot actually you know what I should do is take this and spray it out with a little bit of brake cleaner first this is non non chlorinated brake clean uh, chlorinated shit's freaking deadly, so I'd recommend being really careful with it. Uh, can even eat rubber and plastic, so that's why I don't use it. Um, plus, if you set it on fire, if you're ever so stupid enough to do so, you get something called phosgene gas, which is highly toxic and can cause all sorts of breathing problems and cancer and nasty things. So that's why I don't use that. If you're going to ask... So there we go, the new seal is on, and we're going to replace the needles here in a second. Make sure all these things are really nice and clean uh, before you put them back together. And it doesn't hurt just to put a little dot of after on oil on. I think this has to go on first. Yeah, it does. I don't know, hold on a minute here. It's been a long day, guys. <laughs> Dealing with eBay and this and that and the other. Okay, so we're going to put our throttle arm back on. Um, I'm going to adjust this later, but just for the video, it's going together how it is. So we're going to take our nut, put our nut on. And check the function to make sure the, the uh, rotary, or the rotary, the... The throttle drum still opens and closes freely without any problems. So we're going to take that, we're going to tighten that up. You don't, this has to be tight though, but not crazy tight. 
Um, if it's not tight, what will happen is, there we go, is um, when you pull the throttle, your throttle arm can end up staying open and your truck can run away on you. So that's just something to keep in mind. So we're going to go factory setting on this, which is pretty much flush with the outer ring of this. And the next we're going to go with is the high speed needle, which is right here. We're going to give that a little shot of brake clean too. I'm sure you guys can imagine what spraying brake clean at a high needle would look like. I hope my other package gets here soon because I'm going to be doing an unboxing video probably the next, hopefully, day or two. I got a, um, a mail slip. Uh, I don't know why they just didn't ring my house. I mean, you know, I've been home all day. <laughs> so they decided not to do that. And now I have to go to the post office and stand there for 45 freaking minutes to go pick up whatever it is. But... That will also give me an opportunity to make a YouTube video for you guys. So we're going to go the same idea here. We're going to go right down to flush. That's kind of the base setting for this carburetor is flush and flush. Um, this carburetor is for that engine. Have our little fuel thing here. We're going to give that a little shot of brake clean. Make sure there's no kind of fun stuff hanging around in there. Make sure that's nice and dry. Put a dot of after on oil on the threads. With the big side, there's a small hole and a kind of a bigger hole. The bigger hole faces up, just in case you guys didn't know that. The carburetor sits this way. So we are going to point the needle, because this is going on an RC10 GT eventually. We're going to point it slightly back, and we're going to give that about a quarter turn and tighten it down. You don't need to make this crazy tight, because if you strip out your carburetor body, you're screwed. You don't want to do that, so snug but not crazy tight. Next, we have the O-ring that goes on the bottom. And there's one thing I do, and I've kind of done it forever, and... Someone out there is probably going to say, oh, that's weird, or that's strange, or blah, blah, blah. Let's see if I can find it here. Oh, here we go. It is on the base of the carburetor, around the gasket, or the seal, I should say, rubber seal, I use a little bit of dielectric grease, or, uh, yeah, electric, or tune-up grease. So you put just a... A little bit like that, and it helps to keep the O-ring in place when you're putting it on there. It also helps it to kind of seal. This grease doesn't melt under high temperature like normal grease does. So we're going to do that. Plus it also helps with inserting the carburetor onto the engine. So we're going to make sure that's closed. We're going to put our carburetor on. Nice snug fit. Clock it properly so it's nice and even. And there's a pinch bolt here. Another thing you should do when you're putting your carburetor on is hold the engine and push down on it. Like squeeze the carburetor onto the engine like that. And that way it kind of compresses the O-ring underneath the carburetor a little bit for a better seal. That's just something to keep in mind. And then you want to do up your jam bolt. Like I said, if I had a small enough wrench or socket to get in there, I would, but this is all I've got. You want to go about snug and then about one half turn. You don't want to go crazy tight because you can actually crack your engine block and then you're going to be screwed. Especially with a nice old engine like this. So there you have it. There's a little bit of a carburetor rebuild uh, for this OS. Not really a rebuild, but a cleaning and reassembling, if you will, whatever. Anyways, uh, more to come uh, at a later date. Take it easy, guys.